what's this controversy about Ginger or Marianne? Ginger or Marianne? I mean, give us a break. Everyone knows those two gals can't hold a candle to Lovey Howell. And another thing, why Doofus on set again. Somebody get the other guy. Okay, so tonight is part three and the conclusion to my review of Peter Jackson's Get Back that is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. So in part one of our review, we covered pretty much the series that Peter Jackson has presented on Disney. And then in part two, we did a side-by-side -side comparison of the two albums that ultimately were the result of the Let It Be or Get Back sessions. But tonight, to wrap up my review, I would like to go back to a part we covered in part one. And that is the abundance of material that the Beatles had to work with during these sessions. As I've mentioned, Paul bringing in material that would eventually wind up on his McCartney album and one even on his Ram album. And of course, John bringing in material that would wind up on his Imagine album. And of course, George also introducing material that would wind up on his magnificent album, all things must pass. Now we hit on this subject lightly in part one, but tonight I would like to focus on some of that material and other material written right around this time that would eventually wind up on X Beatles solo releases. Now one of our viewers brought out that the song Across the Universe were tapes from the original 1968 recording. Now I'm fine with that. I have no problem. In the film we see the Beatles working on this song. And of course during the course of the Twickenham sessions they just didn't get it together. And so that's why I'm fine with it. It was in the film, give us the best version. Now I love the original version. I love the story behind it. The female singing you hear are two fans that they went outside the recording session that day and brought them in and miraculously they sound pretty good. That recording to me is just as valid as the more majestic recording that we're all used to hearing. Now, the Beatles were always a band that offered value to their fans. At least with their English releases, they usually offered about 14 songs of high quality music. And in my opinion, as I stated in part two, the very best version available to us is Let It Be Naked. And Let It Be Naked, with the inclusion of Don't Let Me Down, clocks in at about 35 minutes. Now at the time of Let It Be's release, generally you could get pretty good quality recordings at about 22 minutes a side. That is to produce a grooved record where the needle doesn't jump out of those grooves with Paul's new improved bass sounds that had been improving every six months from the time of the recording of Paperback Writer and Rain and on. And of course, I can't help but wonder how well that album would have sold with an additional nine minutes of original Beatle music that was available to them to record and still leave all of the stuff that they would use for Abbey Road. And with the inclusion of Across the Universe, why not go back to another 1968 recording by George Harrison? I believe that this is one of George Harrison's finest songs, and that is the song Not Guilty. Once I knew this song existed, I never understood why it was not included on the White Album. I would find out later that it was considered very seriously for the album. But John was very adamant about including Revolution number no. 9 and eventually George Harrison's song Not Guilty was not included on the release. I really love this song. Not only is it a great rocker, but it also goes into such wonderful little time changes throughout the song. George's voice sounds like a voice from the ether and just as haunting as that voice, George Harrison supplies some great guitar work on this song. And of course, with nine extra minutes, I started thinking, what if they had actually done a proper recording of John's Give Me Some Truth, Paul's Backseat of My Car, 
and George is not guilty. Here we would see that George would at least reattain his three song per album status that he claimed on Revolver. It would have included another Lennon rock song on the lines of Come Together on the album and of course another classic teen love song, Backseat of My Car by Paul McCartney. So what I've done here is I've basically created my fantasy Let It Be album. As you know from part two, I love Let It Be Naked. And when I imagine what I would have thought of that album with the addition of those three songs, in my head, it might have been the Let It Be album that would spend the next three years on the top 100 albums on Billboard instead of Abbey Road. But I do want to bring up one final thought here, and that is this. The Beatles decided to break up. That is history, but look at the material they were working on. Look at their post beatle career solo albums, their releases that came out of that, many of the cuts right from those sessions. And I just can't help but wonder if the Beatles hadn't broken up, what wonderful albums were still in store to all their fans. So all in all, as I stated in part one, I will give Peter Jackson's Get Back five out of four stars. I can't help but wonder if more tinkering with additional tapes are coming our way and the gravity of what the Beatles offered the music world will eventually bring whatever tapes there are to life. Like I stated in part one, the Beatles will be studied on a collegiate level by music majors hundreds of years from now. Our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren will study about them and know about them and compare them to Mozart, Beethoven, Vivaldi, no, I won't do that. And really, when you think about composers on that level, the Beatles are the very first composers on that level that were recorded doing what they did. As a big Beatle fan, I am so pleased that Peter Jackson has extended the film and presented it like he did. But I can't help but wonder if the series is ultimately shooting itself in the foot by extending what was originally going to be a two and a half hour movie. And as I stated before, I feel that probably a good three hour cut of this film would help immensely in gaining interest of casual Beatle fans. Gone are the days where most Beatle fans knew everything. I grew up in a time when you'd go to the supermarket and you'd see magazines with John Paul, George Ringo everywhere. It was not uncommon to see a daily print up in your local newspaper about what was going on with the Beatles. There would be reports on the Beatles and the six o'clock news on the radio on your way to work and your so-called average fan back then knew a whole lot more than your average fan does today. I say present a more compact product for them because they're the ones who love the music. Not everyone is a nutcase about Beatle facts. Peter Jackson has given Beatle aficionados the perfect Christmas gift. But for the casual Beatle fan, a bit of coal in their stockings. And here's a challenge for you. What nine minutes of Beatle music that was recorded, say, from 1968 to 1970, springtime 1970, would you have included on that album if they had made it a 44-minute long album? Now, especially for the subscribers, put that down in the comments and then share the video with people you know who are Beatle fans. Just wait till they compare yours with their ideas. And again, that's what the channel is about. My opinion is not the opinion, ever. As I've stated before, I'm the question and you are the answer. You are the experts. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree with me? If not, where did I go wrong in my reasoning? So bring it on, it's all in fun. And if it's written respectfully, I'll respond.